hello there, Star Wars fans, and welcome to the Collider Star Wars Rebels recap show here on Collider Video. We are talking about Rebels Season 2, Episode 5, Wings of the Master. And joining me today, first of all, sitting over here on my left... Grand Moff Griffin here, aka Death Star David, uh, rocking Death Star. <laughs> kind like of an that. imperial nice. movie today. Yeah. David, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Over here on my right, it's me, Christian Harloff, and it is a pleasure to be with you guys today to talk about the show. And uh, of course, uh, I'm John Campio. Welcome to our recap show. I love doing this recap show, talking Rebels. Um, well, okay. We're, this is how this show's going to go. We're going to talk about all the things we liked about this episode of Rebels. We're going to talk about some of the things that maybe could have been done better. We're going to probably just, you know, do a little bit of uh, prognostication, try to guess where things are going a little bit in the future, and then we will wrap this things up. So let's start this off. We had this new episode start up today, and it it just right into it. I yeah. mean, it no slow build up for two or three minutes, and then into the action. This episode started right in the action. Christian, let's start with you. Yeah. Some of the things you really liked about this episode of Rebels. The action right off the bat, for sure, because it felt like, again, what we've always said about this show is that how much it feels like Star Wars, and you cannot watch this episode and not think those space battles don't feel like Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, even with the Star Destroyers out there. And and I also like, and it was another conversation we always had about Rebels in general. It's like, ah, oh, they're not going to show anything in Star Wars. Well, BS, man. You see a couple of people blow up the same way they did in episode four, Rebels, going out. Um, it, Callus. Being able, it's what Freddie Prince Jr. told us on Jedi Councils. Are you going to see Callus be effective? And he is at first. You know, he's really yeah. taken out and and ruthless, just taking out the rebels. And then the building and showing what's happening with Hera. I really like the fact that we're building up more on her. We were we heard from Filoni that that was going to happen with all the characters this season. That there's going to be more development to see what her place is and to see what her father uh, Cham Syndulla did. Uh, what he was able to do in his career as in the rebellion and now what she's trying to do and the motivation I thought was handled really well um, I also liked the just the uh, the continuous development of Zeb as how loyal he is as a mm, as a comrade yeah. and what he'll do for his friends and and mm. um and you know and then obviously the end and I also liked that Dave Filoni did a voice of one of the one of the characters as well he was one of the um, rebel pilots I think he might have gotten blown up in it but uh, but e either so was he Phoenix leader he was not, I think he was number three he was number okay. three yeah but he's probably maybe was part of the transport I have no idea but uh, anyway so it, it was uh it was I thought it was a good episode for character development for sure and. And, you know, even the, I, I really it, and it goes back as we know, we've seen Ezra in episodes last week where he's it looks like he's going to maybe towards the dark side of things, too. But I like the playful banter that he had with Chopper in this one. It's like him, the, the family dog and him just kind of going back and forth. No, so, I called co-pilot. Yeah, yeah, he banged was, him over the head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I got a kick out of it all. So I just overall, it was a pretty good episode. Yeah, I tell you, my wife loves Chopper. Yeah. I mean, she loves... Whenever... When we're watching Rebels, whenever Chopper... It doesn't matter what it is. It can simply be like, Chopper, which door was left open? And he's just going, wah, wah, wah. Whenever Chopper talks, yeah. she laughs her head off. Like, uh, he... Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Ah! He's just well, because he's got so such a funny. personality, yeah, and Dave really Filoni has said this too, and Vanessa Marshall actually said what yeah. I interviewed as well too, is that, that if you look at R2-D2 as the dog, he's the cat. Ah, uh, that's yeah. nice. That's yeah. a nice one. Yeah. Well, I mean, some of the things that I, I really dug about it, it was great having our, this was the most prominent Mon Cal character we've had yeah. in the show. Very short for a Mon Cal, mm -hmm. uh, but that, that's fine, whatever, as the ship designer. Loved, love, love, love. As soon as they started talking about a new ship, a lot of firepower, I'm thinking, could this be the B wing? Are they like, are they going to bring out the B wing? And they brought it out, and I was like, yeah, because yeah. the B wing is my uh, favorite. Uh, actually, five. Well, I mean, obviously, everybody's favorite is the X wing. I mean, obviously, but you got your A wings, your Y wings, but the B wings. I've always loved the B wings yeah. and the whole mechanics of it and how it works. So I got really excited seeing that as well. I love the interaction. I mean, the character of Hera has been. I think it's fair to say from the beginning of this show, not just this episode, but the entire show, she has been the one we've seen into her soul more than anybody mm -hmm. else. We, I think, more than any other character in this show. We really have a grasp on who Hera is, and we got to see even more of that, or at least even more of that reaffirmed. Like when she stands there looking at the sky and understanding that's where she's always wanted to be, that's what she's wanted to do. I feel like we got even more of a look into her, and I enjoyed that a great deal. You already pointed out the playful banter. The space battles are great. Yeah. Very Star Wars-ish the way that the, the 
the uh, turrets and guns are handed from inside the mm -hmm. ship. Very Star Wars feeling. So, and I was really curious. Those weren't Star Destroyers. I'm very. They were smaller. They were smaller. much more smaller. Yeah, yeah, they okay. each like had five, three or four ties just attached uh, okay. to them. Um, so those are very interesting. Looks. Seeing. I, I'm wondering why Callus is there without a star destroyer of his own. Right, I mean, it's right. callous, but whatever. So those are some of the things that really worked for me this episode. What about you, David? I thought this episode was fantastic. I love Hera just first time in the the pilot seat of the B-Wing, uh, just kind of just, just doing what she does, just being an excellent pilot. And I love her conversation with the Mon Calamari, whose name is uh, Corey, I believe. Mm -hmm. And they talk, he's looking for a pilot to pilot this ship of his because he's not getting up there. He's like, why would I be up there? I thought that was when funny. I, you know, I can come crash designer out there. doesn't yeah. even like to fly. I thought <laughs> right. that was we funny. We stay on the ground. And um, not only is she a good pilot, but he wanted somebody who also had a great character. And she's, she's a hero. She's a hero. She does what she has to do. She has to fight a war. She doesn't want to, but to help those in need, she has to do what she has to do. We got to actually know a little bit more about Hera because she's always been kind of the mom figure, always the one back on the ship while the kids are, are out doing their adventure. So it was nice to see her up front doing the action, do what had to be done. Uh, also, too, um, yeah, Zeb. I love Zeb, too. I agree with that. Uh, he had some nice moments. So I love when the ship, when he was, he went up to the front to see what was going on, and it makes the ship go down. Like, back up, Zeb. Yeah, back yeah. up, back yeah. up. Uh, that was really nice, too. So, no, I, I just love this episode. And also, the names for the B-Wing, I wanted to say. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, they call it, at first, a uh, blockade buster. Mm. Right, Not, yeah. They didn't know what it was. They are like, we need something to block, you know, you know, get the uh, blockades out. And also, I think he called it a bleed wing. Is what uh, Quarry called it when oh, it first I saw it. I think it was like a blue. That. That's why it was red. That. And then he looked at it. He's like, you know what? I think I want to change the color. So yeah. there was a couple of different ways, and then eventually they just call it a B wing in the end. Yeah, yeah. I great. mean, yeah. There, to me, uh, the other thing too is, and this is this goes from being the Star Wars like ad ad addict that I am, mm -hmm. is that when reading New Dawn, and I know which is the novel that we first ever see Hera in. I know you're not a huge fan of the book, but what what to the progression of where she started and knowing that it is canon, where she started and how she was on her own and how she eventually found Kanan and then how she found Sabine and then how she found Zeb and, and Ezra, but now how she's really finding herself. And Ooh. that's what we really found in this episode, more of what, and even when, when um, what was the Mon Calamari's <coughs> Quarry. Thing? When Quarry had said, said to her, you left your family. And she's like, well, no, the sacrifices had to be made. And it was like, you see that she is Chom uh, Sundala's mm -hmm. daughter. You yeah. see that. If you've read these or you know the Clone Wars, you know what Cham is all about. If you don't, I suggest going back and, and learning more about her father because you're going to learn more about him in Rebels Read for sure. Lords of the Sith. Read Lords of the Sith. Go check out some of his episodes from Clone Wars. It's worth it. Um, and they even mentioned they, there was some nice throwbacks to the Clone Wars as well, too. So it was yeah. a nice episode. Yeah, I going on then to some of the things that we might consider could have been done a little bit better. I it you know what? Rebels is not the first show to do this. So I mean, I okay. That ship is probably what? Fifty thousand pounds, sixty thousand pounds. The B Wing? No, no, no. Uh the uh uh, the ship they landed there, not right. the ghost, but right. the... Oh, uh, yeah, they're, they're... What do they call the, the that subship? Was the, that was not the ghost. That was the, fa uh, the, uh, phantom. the phantom. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The phantom, right? That's probably 30, 40,000 mm -hmm. pounds. Oh, but this 120-pound girl, if she stands at the back, that will be the difference between if the <laughs> well, thing Zeb's goes... like 1,000 pounds. Okay, but. yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. A um, couple things, and this isn't... These aren't criticisms about the episode itself. This is about kind of what the episode... What it represented to me, and this is only because I like the show so much. After watching what was episode one of the season, or whatever we want to call it, the the uh, the, uh, the movie, yeah, the season of the fall, the, the, the mm -hmm. season of the fall, man, these episodes are feeling really short to me. Yeah, they, they are. They feel so short, and they feel so fast. Like I feel like I sit down, I feel like I'm watching a, a webisode. Like I sit down, and you blink, and the yeah. episode's over. If I didn't like this show, that wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, you're but not I really, love this it's, show. It's funny. You're not really saying a negative. No, it's like, it's because like, it does. It is. If you look at it, it's a normal duration of a show. Yeah, it's that, 22 yeah. minutes, which is a normal 30-minute show for television. And I'm watching it. just feels it's, it's really feeling damn short. Yeah. A part of me almost wishes, like I, I know we got really lucky. This year we're getting 20 episodes instead of whatever last year's was, 11 13 or something. Or something mm -hmm. yeah. But I almost wish we had 10 episodes that were... 46 minutes long instead you're of you're getting like, a couple you're gonna get i mean they, they usually yeah, whether gonna do, you'll get the obviously a season finale but then the break finale which i believe is in maybe sometime in december mm -hmm. will be an hour and then right. you, then you'll get a couple and that'll, breaks. that'll feel great yeah the other thing once again this is about show as a whole and while i really enjoyed this episode what i have been noticing the last couple of episodes is like you know what to me and maybe other people see it differently maybe filoni sees it differently to me the central figure of this should be if it isn't actually it should be Kanan. And mm -hmm. I am starting to feel a lack of Kanan. I know we got a little bit of Kanan this episode, 
But, you know, we've had one that was kind of focused on uh, Ezra and Sabine and Zeb going off to the ship. We've had several, Ezra, you know, focus yeah. here. Like, and that's great. And th these are all wonderful. And the span, when we sit back after the season's over and watch the season as a whole, maybe it won't feel like that at all. But for now, it feels like I am, I am, I feel a real lack of Kanan right now, and I want a little bit more Kanan. Oh, I, sorry, I think that goes to your situation, the problem with the show's length. You only get 22 minutes an episode, mm -hmm. and they have to cover all these characters you see here in these posters, which are all interesting, you know, on their own. Like Hera has, you know, she's in a novel. Kanan has uh, The Lost Paddle on comic book out right now, but we only have 22 minutes. There's not enough time. Yeah, but yeah, that's, but a, I wish that's we another reason with 22 episodes in the yeah. season. And, mm -hmm. I, and that's also the thing that I'm, because I, I understand that point because Kanan happens to be my favorite character as well, but I'm not worried about it because, again, hearing what Filoni said is that everyone's going to be developed. You're going to get a few, you're going to get a bunch of Kanan episodes. It's just a matter of, they haven't happened yet. Yeah, um, yeah. they will because everybody's going to be focused on. I actually really enjoy the fact that they focus on Hera because I think that she's been kind of in the background a lot. She's usually always floating around in space mm -hmm. while that's they're on true. their mission. Yeah, that's yeah, true. So, so it was nice to see a change of pace with her because I know we're going to get a lot of Jedi stuff, and I know even talking to Freddie, he's going to Kane is going to go through some stuff. Uh, he's going to remember he said it, the trials and oh, all yes. that stuff. So, but as far as me, what I didn't like uh, or I think could have been done better is even when they were when they were talking when they were down and they were and. and and they were talking to Quarry, and I thought some of the humor maybe missed. And I and I thought it, it they they after a little while it was like okay let's let's get her in the air let's get the, the plane and and it was kind of going back to what happened I think in the second episode in the with the clones when um when when the clones admitted that they 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 the one clone admitted they called the Empire Wolf, and was like yeah, we I forgive thought. you mm -hmm. and this was Hera told a really sobby story all right you can have the plane. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, like, yeah. It like, it's like one of those and it's like again it's 22 minutes but it, we've got to get into it but he's just like you know what I'm, I'm not giving this to any pilot well I don't have my parents anymore well shucks take my plan yeah, you and get take to my take food while you're at it too you know what you, the other thing that bothered me a little bit I thought there's a little bit of a plot hole it doesn't really matter but here's the thing they're working so hard to break through this blockade so they can deliver food right and for whatever reason the Empire we don't want those people to have food I, I, I don't understand that but fine See, they break through the blockade. Man, it's a good thing the Empire doesn't know how to land ships. Yeah. Because wh wait a minute, why doesn't Callus? Can you drop off? Why doesn't Callus just send some Tie Fighters down there to blow them up? I, well, I, like, you can't because you, they, it was on the planet below. Oh, yeah. you're saying the one? The, no, that, that, that was going to be my weakness. Oh, right, the supplies. Right, 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 yeah, right, that was going right. to be my weakness because they they, right. they 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 hightail it like let's get out of here and they just leave Callus behind. I'm right. like, well, can't Callus just land and like take the and supplies or, back? Or, or orbital bombardment. And if that ship, and if that ship that she's on the building is so powerful, right? Yeah. Why not just mass produce those things and fire out? You know, I know well, they don't have the money for it. We see them in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, so yeah, they don't able they aren't able to mass produce those till at least. Because in the so, episode, the guy says we're going to make more. But in Return no, of the yeah. Jedi, I never saw him have that kind of no, firepower. No, like they. It's yeah. A, well, the B wings, especially if you get into the to the role playing game. I know I refer a lot to the role playing game. When you look at the stats of the B wings. They are yeah. the most heavily like firepower wise yeah. of, of all the things. Now, uh, remember that wasn't a legit star destroyer that it took out. That was more still, like a, like a freight. Yeah. freight yeah. But still, it took that thing down with one <laughs> shot. See. Yeah, one shot. And those those ships, they're not they're. They're not TIE fighters. Right. Even those freighters should have shielding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one shot, they seem to oversell the power of the B-Wings. I would have been okay if they said, if in there there was like, well, there's a kyber crystal in there as well too because they've mm -hmm. made a big emphasis on those crystals. Like in, in the lost episodes of Clone Wars, there was, because the, the crystal is what powered up the Death Star. Yeah. And, and to, so like if they would have told me that this particular B-Wing had a, a crystal in it, then I would be like, okay, then I understand. Like, otherwise, why not just use uh, as many of those ships as possible and take start taking out star destroyers? Yeah. Well, also, also, I also want to say too, real quick uh, about Harris promotion at the end. Mm -hmm. She's now yeah, captain of Phoenix that, Squadron, yes. which yeah. is I really like cool. That. Yeah, yeah I love that's that. nice yeah. you're in charge. And you now. know what's really cool? I don't know how they pulled it off just with an animated face, but they did it really well. When he, when the commander said, "Where you are now, Captain," you know what? The the happiness okay. on her face, yeah. the pride. Right. I thought that was really a nice moment. Right. And so I, I just, it was a nice little chair on top of mm -hmm. what I thought was a really solid episode. Yeah, a lot of, couple more, I was like, okay, is that really keeping the ship from tipping? Or like, why didn't they just bombard it? Okay, whatever, we'll put those in our rear view Middle, yeah. yeah. Overall yeah. though, it felt like Star Wars. The space combat was yeah. great. Uh, the the hair stuff focusing on Hera's stuff was really great. And uh, each step along the way, they're adding new pieces to the puzzle. Now we've got the 
this Moncal mm -hmm. uh, designer who said we're going to build more of these, and we're getting these along the way. Yeah. And so I'm really curious to see where we're going to get by the mid-season finale going into the second half of the season. I think they're setting up a lot of really nice stuff. And the awesome thing is we're getting the formation of the Rebel Alliance. Yeah. We're seeing it yeah. happen. We're seeing, we're seeing the first one of the first engineers yeah. you know, for new technologies. We're seeing it slowly build and build and build. And I love that Rex is a part of it. I love the how yeah. they're, they're not beating you over the head that he's part mm -hmm. of it, but he's there. And like yeah. even when he's looking out and they, and, they have, and and he's and he's, in, he's he's shooting down the fighters and he's he's using his expertise. I thought it was really placed well of how they're utilizing everyone. Oh, I agree. All right, folks, that will do it for us for this installment of our Collider Rebels recap show for season two, episode five. What was it Wing of the Master? Or? Yeah, Wing of the Masters. Wing of the Masters. Mm -hmm. uh, let us know what you thought about the episode. That's the important thing here. What did you think? Jump into the comments section of this video. Leave your thoughts and all the points we were brought up. What are some good things you thought maybe? we missed what are some negative things you thought we missed leave the conversation in there and guys remember have a conversation with each other we're all stores star wars fans so keep it above board i want to thank dennis behind the camera and thank you to you guys so david where can people find you online you can find me uh, on twitter at griffin de and here every tuesday with john campion the flash recap show and over here on my right, Christian Harloff, where can people find you? Well, at Christian Harloff on both Twitter and Instagram. But if this is your first time catching the Rebels recap or you just stumbled upon us and you don't know about Collider Jedi Council, man, are you missing out? Come on out on Thursdays. That's when we do it, Collider Jedi Council. We have a really cool episode tomorrow. There's so much to talk about. We haven't talked about it yet on Council, the international trailer, the TV spots, the Entertainment Weekly pictures. There's so much to talk about. Oh, my Comic God. Comic reviews. There's so, so much. much. Make sure you join us. If you haven't watched, watch past episodes. Go to the Collider Jedi Council playlist get caught up and then come check us out on thursdays and just make sure in general you're subscribed to collider video keeping you up to date on everything we do here on collider video so that'll do it for us guys thanks so much for joining us my name is john campy until next time bye bye